All right, so the government has transferred, in fact, the Reserve Bank of India has transferred its surplus cash, which is uh, an annual proposition. But this time around, the amount is huge. Many see this as a blessing to perhaps restart or revive the slowdown process and, and make sure that the economy is up and running. But will it happen? It has led to a fair share of politics. I think the principal question over here is, how is this going to help the banking sector? How is it going to help the economically poor or the person who's left out in the queue? Joining me right now is Mr. Soumya Kanti Ghosh. He's the Group Chief Economic Advisor of the SBI. Thank you very much, sir, for speaking to NDTV. This is a surplus transfer. Uh, many are looking at it as a sort of a bumper bailout. Uh, for the government. I want to understand in, you know, in, in banking terms what this means. Do you think that this will, this will help the banking sector simply because the finance minister only a few days ago announced a 70,000 crore rupees aid or help? Yeah, uh, thank you, Sanket. I think let me just uh, first uh, explain in a few words how this transfer has been made. I think uh, there was a demand earlier that the RBI transfer should also come out of the unrealized gains. But yesterday in the transfer, the RBI has made it clear that this transfer is out of the retained earnings of the RBI and not out of the unrealized gains, which is basically the intervention in the forex market and others. So from that point of view, this, uh, uh, it's a very conscious decision and it holds very well also for the uh, central bank. Now, and it has also set out a limit that it could be in the range of 5.5% to 6.5%. Uh, uh, that should be the number which the RBI should be looking into. And this year it has decided that the entire income should be transferred to the government, which is at one point. 2 3 lakh crores and now we add to that 53,000 crores which makes it 1.76 lakh crores. So this is the arithmetic. Now coming to a specific question that how that is going to help the fiscal, yes it is going to help the fiscal because the budgeted amount of the RBI transfer was at 90,000 crore. So if we net out the 28,000 crore interim transfer which the government received in February, that means that the total amount transferred this year is 1,48,000 crore as of now, which means that the excess is actually around 58,000 crores, which is 0.3% of, of, of GDP. So basically, uh, this number now, 0.3%, now we have to see how this is juxtaposed against the possible revenue shortfall. As of now, I think the revenue numbers of uh, the ex numbers of the government uh, uh, doesn't look extremely encouraging. So there are indications, and we also believe that the shortfall could be a little larger, maybe around one lakh crore. So, uh, but the important thing is that if if 56, 58,000 crore could be uh, offset from the RBI reserves, extra reserves, and there is some amount of since it's a uh, budget for eight months, so then we have some pro data adjustment also on the expenditure side. So I think at the end of the day, the good thing is that the government will be able to maintain the fiscal deficit at 3.3 percent. There will be no extra borrowings. So the markets actually, the bond markets, as you see today, the bond markets, the yields went down significantly. The bond markets, the currency markets, and also to some extent, the equity market should cheer this move. So all in all, I think this move is a good move. And in conjunction with the accommodative monetary policy, I think this will hold the economy in good state in the coming quarters when growth has been slow. Okay, uh, Mr. Ghosh, I want to understand, uh, since, since this is being spoken about a lot, particularly in the political circles, uh, and right here on NDTV also, uh, we, we carried a, a broadcast immediately after the budget, uh, which, which almost appeared as if this is a story of the missing 1.7 lakh crore rupees, uh, as far as earnings are concerned of the government. Uh, the government tried to explain on its part and now we see you know a surplus transfer of of a somewhat similar amount i want to understand from you for the benefit of our viewers how can we explain this the amount missing then and a surplus transfer now Uh, no, let me just clarify this. I think this number, uh, this 1.76 lakh crore number and that number, I'll come to that one. I think this numbers being close is basically just a coincidence. I don't see nothing more into it. 
But having said that, I think I just like to clarify one point over here. Yes, there has been an there has been estimates which shows that the uh, budgeted numbers, the revenue numbers, could be higher by higher by 1.7 lakh crores as compared to the numbers uh, which was present, which was there in the May budget. But we also need to understand that the expenditure numbers are also higher by 1.5 lakh crores. So therefore, the real difference at the end of there is 20,000 crores. We can argue that this year the difference is on the higher side because there are also been instances in FY 2009 and 2014 when the difference there was a difference around 30,000 crores from the uh, estimates which was earlier announced. So basically, the July budget numbers were higher by 30,000 crores. So the point which I'm trying to make here is that yes, the number this time is on the higher side, but this has happened also in the past. But possibly the government uh, that's why I said at the beginning that. If the fact is that the expenditure is also uh, overstated by 1.5 lakh crores, the government can always rationalize the expenditures on a pro rata basis so as to attain the fiscal deficit target. Okay, Mr. Ghosh, uh, uh, a question that would be of interest to the man on the street. You tell me how is he going to benefit? Uh, of course, a major chunk of this money is going to into the banking system. How is the man on the ground going to benefit? This is being seen as a big step of reform or a big move to kickstart the economy, to arrest the process of slowdown. For the man on the street, how is this going to be defining? I will explain to Sanket. I think that uh, the globally also now there is a huge debate. I think if you look into the uh, major economies around the world, I think globally now is a huge debate. For example, recently in the Jackson Hole meeting, there was a clear divide that in 1970s we were in an era of high interest rate and high inflation. In the 2019, Central banks around the world, including also India, the emerging economies are in the era of low inflation, low growth, and perhaps the advanced economies are in the era of stagflation. So we need some new thinking in macroeconomics. But the important point is that we have done it on monetary policy, but monetary policy has its limits. So we need a fiscal policy because fiscal policy always acts as a counter cyclic stabilizer. This means that this extra amount could actually come back into the system in, with more money in the hands of the people. So that will enable the purchasing power. So at the end of the day, recovery is only possible if both the policies work in tandem. But we had a problem on the fiscal side because we can't Spain because the fiscal num the f there is a fiscal constraint. So from that point of view, these interim RBI numbers could act as a bonanza in supplementing the monetary policy, which we believe will continue. I mean, the, the, the RBI will continue to cut rates in the future given the growth conditions. So these two will work in tandem and possibly create the demand from bottom, which will benefit the common man on the streets. Okay, Mr. Ghosh, my final question. Uh, from what I understand of what you say. This is an injection of cash into the system. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't this, isn't this the exact opposite of what a demonetization did? Suck out cash of the system and, and, and you know centralize it, get it back into the banking system. Here you have a situation where that cash is being given back to the economy. It's going back. I'm I'll not say it's both a similar things. It's not an injection of cash. Basically, it is just a transfer on the RBI balance sheet to the government. So, the, so therefore, now the RBI will come back into the system. Basically, if the government starts spending, and how the RBI does it, basically the RBI either has to create an asset or the liabilities. It has to just produce more currency in circulation. So, and that amount, once the RBI government spends, it will start coming back into the system. So, the demonetization and this is not exactly comparable. But I agree with the fact that this increased spending on the part of the government, once it happens, this will actually put the system on a higher level than what it was earlier. All right. Mr. Ghosh, appreciate you for joining us.